Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Please take your seats. I call the meeting of the General Committee on Democracy, Human Rights, and Humanitarian Questions to order. Dear colleagues, the agenda for this meeting has been distributed. Can I please invite you to adopt the agenda? Do you have any objections? No, the agenda is adopted. Thank you. This afternoon, we will continue to consider the amendments to the draft resolution, after which we will move on to the supplementary items. So we still have quite a workload. We therefore return to the consideration of amendments. We ended the previous meeting discussing amendments 13, 14, and 15. It might be helpful if I explain briefly to the committee what was agreed and how I intend to proceed. Amendment 13, to replace paragraph 33, was agreed to. The main wording of Mrs. Fry's from Canada Amendment 14 was incorporated into the new paragraph by oral amendment. While there appeared to be general agreement of the idea, we were unable to finalize what to do exactly about the text included in Amendment 15. In discussions between the interested delegations after the meeting this noon, a compromise text was agreed. That text has been circulated and I invite Mr. Hachiani, our rapporteur, to, to propose this compromise text as a manuscript amendment, you all have this text, this printed out text has been circulated. Mr. Hajiani, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Dear colleagues, we agree this morning some uh, adjust adjustments to paragraph 33. Amendments 1 3, proposed by Mr. Schmidt, was adopted, and the proposal by Dr. Fry for gender needs assessments was also agreed. I spoke during the break with those delegations that had raised concerns and believe we have found a good compromise to also include the substance as proposed by Ms. Muratova, as this is agreed to by our Armenian colleagues and others. I hope we can all agree to this compromise text. The text has been circulated. The intention is to add, after the words and occupied territories, the words and people affected by conflicts and occupation of territories. This then covers people in conflict areas and occupied territories, as well as people affected by them. So the full paragraph, paragraph will uh, read as follows calls upon OSCE participating states when working to address conflicts to focus attention on the human rights, fundamental freedoms, and humanitarian challenges and conduct gender needs assessments of people in conflict areas and occupied territories and people affected by conflicts and occupation of territories, including the refugees and internally displaced persons, and on the obligation under the international law of occupied powers and armed groups under their command. I hope you agree. Thank you very much, all of the, all of the persons who has participated to, and helping uh, uh, to have this agreement. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Rapporteur, for your work. Does anyone wish to speak against this amendment? No. Let's vote. All those who vote in favor of this proposed amendment, please raise your cards.
All those against, please raise your cards. Nobody. Nobody. Abstentions, please. The amendment as circulated on paper presented by rapporteur is adopted by 50 yes against zero abstention zero. It's my turn to thank you that we were able to reach this compromise. Thank you. We will now take paragraphs 34 to 36 together. Does anyone want a separate vote on any of these paragraphs? No. No? So, is anyone against? No. Therefore, paragraphs 34 to 36 are adopted. The turn is on amendment 16. As amendment 16 is in my personal name, I will invite Mr. Dietli of Switzerland to propose it. You have the floor. Ja, Frau Vorsitzende, geschätzte Kolleginnen und Kollegen, ich darf Ihnen diesen Antrag wie folgt begründen. Die humanitäre Lage in der Ostukraine ist sehr schlimm. Seit 2014 sind mehr als 10.000 Menschen ums Leben gekommen, an die 30.000 Menschen wurden verletzt und eine Besserung ist nicht wirklich in Sicht. Vor diesem Hintergrund verlangt dieser Antrag einen sofortigen Waffenstillstand. Es braucht auch verstärkte Bemühungen zur raschen Beseitigung der Antipersonenminen und eine spürbare Verbesserung des Überganges für Passanten zwischen den beiden Konfliktzonen. Die Lage ist heute unbefriedigend. Es muss besser werden. Dies soll mit der vorgeschlagenen Änderung dieses Punktes in der Resolution deutlich zum Ausdruck gebracht werden. Ich bitte Sie, dem Antrag zuzustimmen. Besten Dank. Does anyone wish to speak against Amendment 16? What is our rapporteur's opinion on it? I very much agree with this amendment, which I have also co-sponsored, and as it gives emphasis to the humanitarian aspects of the conflicts and is addressed to all parties concerned. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Let's vote. Will all those in favor of Amendment 16 please raise their voting cards? Will all those against please raise their voting cards? No. No. Abstentions? Nobody. Amendments, uh, amendment 16 is adopted by 58 yes and zero no, zero abstentions. As this Amendment 16 was to replace paragraph 37. I now take paragraph 37 as defeated and we therefore do not need to vote on it. We will now take paragraphs 38 to 40 together. Does anyone wish a separate vote on any of these paragraphs? So we can take paragraphs 38 to 40 together. Is anyone against? No. 
Therefore, paragraphs 38 to 40 are declared adopted. Amendment 17, since Vice Chair Mr. Link is not present, I call Mr. Hachiani to propose Amendment 17. I don't have So, consider the OSCE Human Dimension Implementation Meeting to be a vital forum for dialogue on human rights topics. Calls for timely agreement of the agenda for the meeting and expresses concern regarding attempts by some participating states to obstruct the effective preparation of, this, of the meeting. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak against Amendment 17? I shall then put Amendment 17 to the vote. Will all those in favor of Amendment 17 please raise their voting cards? Will all those against Amendment 17 please raise their voting cards? Are there any abstentions? Amendment 17 is adopted by 53 for, zero against, three abstentions. We will now take paragraphs 41 to 45 together. Does anyone wish a separate vote on those paragraphs? No. Is anyone against? No, therefore I declare paragraphs 41 to 45 as adopted. Amendment 18. Io passo la parola al signore del Barba della delegazione italiana. Thank you, thank you, uh, President. Uh, this amendment says something that should uh, be self-evident, uh, but perhaps uh, needs to be said explicitly. People who report hate crimes or bias-motivated abuse by the authorities should not face a relation for doing so. The paragraph uh, is consistent with paragraph 13.8 uh, of the Vienna yeah. concluding document, uh, uh, as well as uh, principle seven of the Helsinki Final Act, uh, which protects uh, the rights of people to know and act upon their human rights. Grazie. Does anyone wish to speak against Amendment 18? What is our rapporteur's opinion? I support, I support the amendment. I then put Amendment 18 to the vote. Will all those in favor of Amendment 18 please raise voting cards? Will all those against Amendment 18 please raise voting cards?
Any abstentions? Amendment 18 is adopted by 54 yes, zero against, zero abstention. We then proceed to Amendment 19, and I call Ms. Miliute from Lithuania to propose Amendment 19. Thank you, Madam Chair. On December 20, 2018, the OSCE Moscow Mechanism Rapporteur, Wolfgang Benedict of Austria, submitted his report to the OSCE Permanent Council on this very issue. Invoking the mechanism was an important step and utilized an OSCE tool to address an escalating human rights concern. It provides an important basis for efforts to address the egregious and ongoing human rights abuses in Chechnya. The proposal does not detract from the existing paragraph in any way, but adds an explicit reference to an important resource within the OSC community. Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak against Amendment 19? Russian Federation, please. Выступаем против поправки господина Кардина и предлагаем полностью снять пункт 46. Обвинением в нарушении прав ЛГБТ в Чечне является голословными. В прошлом году, когда 16 из 57 стран инициировали сначала венский, а затем московский механизм ОБСЕ, мы просили эти страны дать нам конкретные фамилии и факты тех 27 граждан, которые якобы подвергались внесудебным расправам. Мы хотим понять, в чем именно нас обвиняют. Однако нам никто ничего не представил. Не было таких достоверных, правоверных фактов и в докладе э, Бенедека, который готовился в рамках московского механизма дистанционно и был составлен на, э, удивительно быстро. Мы не считаем себя связанными его рекомендациями. Клевета по так называемым чеченским геям стоит в одном ряду с такими пропагандистскими акциями, как дело Скрипалей, или российское вмешательство в выборы. Подобные методы давления являются недостойными и неприемлемыми. Призываем это прекратить и снять пункт 46 полностью. Спасибо. Does anyone wish to speak? Uh, no. What is Mr. Hadjani's opinion on this? I am in favor of this amendment, and we have to refer also on the on the statements from UN. This was the refer for the report and also for the resolutions. Thank you. I will then put Amendment 19 to the vote. Will all those in favor of Amendment 19 please raise their voting cards? All those against Amendment 19, please raise voting cards. Abstentions? Amendment 19 is adopted by 41 yes, 5 no, and 4 abstentions. Let's move to amendment, oh no, no, no. We now need to vote on paragraph 46 as amended. Is anyone against? Yes. Please, please count. Those in favor? Everybody.
abstentions. Paragraph 46, as amended, is adopted by 31 for one against zero abstention. We go to amendment 20. I call Mr. Kornienko from Russian Federation to propose this amendment. Хочу прежде всего обратить внимание, что мы не предлагаем заменить весь пункт, но считаем необходимым внести в него изменения. В частности, предлагаем обращаться с призывами не только к Российской Федерации, но ко всем государственным участникам ОБСЕ и призвать их сотрудничать в решении проблем дискриминации, преступления на почве ненависти, антисемитизма и других форм нетерпимости. Благодарю за внимание. Спасибо. Does anyone wish to speak against Amendment 20? Ukraine delegation, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. You know, the common sense and formal logics uh, says to us that uh, the paragraph 47 is uh, connected to paragraph 46 that calls upon uh, the protection of human rights uh, uh, in Chechnya, considering the uh, situation with uh, LGBT community. So uh, if we disengage uh, the paragraph 47 from the uh, paragraph 46, uh, it would be illog illogical. In the paragraph 46, as it follows in the report, uh, we call on Russian Federation cooperate to cooperate and to the federal government to engage in the problem of the human rights in Chechnya. It's obvious, uh, it's logical, so I'm against uh, this amendment. Thank you. Спасибо. What is Mr. Hadidjani's opinion on this amendment 20? I cannot agree uh, with this amendment because we have to call the Russian Federation for the, for the responsibility. Okay. I shall now put amendment 20 to the vote. All those in favor of Amendment 20, please raise your voting cards high up so we can see it. All those against Amendment 20, please raise your cards. Any abstentions? Amendment 20 is defeated by 24 against, 11 for, and 3 abstentions. We now need to vote on paragraph 47. Is there anyone against? I take it paragraph 47 is agreed. We now need to vote on paragraph 48. Anyone against? I take it it is agreed. We come to discuss amendment 21. E do la parola al signore Augustori della delegazione italiana. 
Grazie Presidente. Proponiamo con questo emendamento di cancellare il paragrafo 49 perché riteniamo che la piena integrazione delle popolazioni rom e sinti sia impossibile da raggiungere finché viene perseguita solo con un'azione unilaterale, come sempre si è fatto e con scarsi risultati. E ora prioritariamente e preventivamente è necessario che siano le comunità rom e sinti a dare dimostrazione di volere l'integrazione e non invece di preferire per libera scelta di vivere ai margini della società, spesso per trarne vantaggio tramite attività illecite. Grazie. Grazie. Does anyone wish to speak against amendment 21? Ukraine delegation, please. Уважаемая госпожа председатель, уважаемые коллеги, мы предлагаем оставить этот пункт, поскольку его направление направлено на то, что его суть направлена на то, чтобы интегрировать и не допускать дискриминации. Исключение этого пункта но каким-то образом переводит указанные группы но, э, из нашего общего ряда. Мы предлагаем оставить этот пункт. Спасибо. Мистер Хаджиадани, what is your opinion? I am against this amendment. I mean, it's the main pillar of the resolution also for the report. Thank you. I shall now put Amendment 21 to the vote. Will all those in favor of Amendment 21 please raise your vo voting cards? Will all those against Amendment 21 please raise your voting cards? Abstentions? Yeah. Amendment 21 is defeated by 48 against, 4 for, and 2 abstentions. Paragraph 49 is therefore agreed to. We will now take paragraphs 50 to 52 together. Does anyone wish a separate vote on paragraphs 50 to 52? No. Is anyone against those paragraphs? No. I take it paragraphs 50 to 52 are agreed to. Amendment 22, I call Mr. Aydin from Turkey to propose Amendment 22. Thank you, Madam Chair. We would like to delete this paragraph because the paragraph is drafted to falsely accuse Turkey of not implementing its international obligations. During the July the 15th coup attempt, our 251 people brutally massacred and more than, more than 2,000 injured. On that particular night, all democratic institutions, including the parliament itself, and the air, airports, military headquarters were bombarded. And luckily, thanks God we are here. We saved ourselves. However, from then on, you know, we have been doing our best in the process of recuperating in order to, to save our democracy, rule of law, and of course our sovereignty. 
by reforming our political system, judicial system, and bureaucracy, of course. In this recuperation process, we initially started to lift the state of emergency first, and we did it in 2018. Despite of all these efforts of good will of Turkey, we sadly observed that the European public opinions failed to acknowledge the gravity of security threats our nation faces and the necessity of the measures we have taken accordingly. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak against Amendment 22? Madam Chair. Rapporteur, please. Um, I want to make an oral amendment to delete the first part of the, of the Article 53 and let only calls on Turkey to effectively implement its commitments in the field of democracy, the rule of law, and respect for human rights. Just to let, to find a compromise. If you agree. Yes, yes. Thank you very uh, much. Um, we are on the side of agreement. I think we have to follow the procedure of this oral amendment proposed by our rapporteur in accordance with paragraph 10 of rule 22 of our rules of procedure. First, I will ask whether there is any objection to this oral amendment being considered. If there is any objection, the oral amendment cannot be considered and it therefore falls. Is there any objection on the oral proposal made by um, Rapporteur? Portugal, please. Okay. Uh, no? Huh? No, no. No, I'm sorry. Uh, Je m'excuse, c'est la Belgique, je m'excuse. There, uh, there is an objection, so uh, this oral uh, proposal falls, and therefore I put amendment 22 to the vote. Will all those in favor of amendment 22 please raise their voting cards? Will all those against Amendment 22 please raise voting cards? Nine. Abstentions? Amendment 22 is defeated by 41 against, 14 for, and two abstentions. Therefore, paragraph 53 is agreed to. We will now take paragraphs 54 to 57 together does anyone want a separate vote on 54 to 57? No. Is anyone against 54 to 57? I therefore take it paragraphs 54 to 57 are adopted. Amendment 23, I call Mr. Wicker from the United States to propose Amendment 23. Madam Chair, uh, Lee Zeldin presenting on behalf of Senator Wicker from the United States Delegation. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, dear colleagues, for considering this important amendment. OSCE participating states have freely adopted robust commitments to uphold the rule of law. Implementing these commitments is the surest way to put a stop to Interpol abuse. In the face of continued abuse by autocratic states, however, democratic countries should use their voices votes, and influence within Interpol to urge greater accountability and transparency concerning this ongoing malfeasance. 
Interpol's constitution and rules on the processing of data provide sound guidelines for safeguarding the organization from political interference, but they are not rigorously implemented. Countries that repeatedly abuse Interpol systems should face credible penalties. Interpol institutions should publicize which countries are most frequently found to be operating in violation of Interpol's constitution and regulations. Democracies should lobby for these changes and work proactively to defend individuals within their territories from harassment, particularly refugees and asylum seekers. I ask everyone to vote for this amendment. Does anyone wish to speak against Amendment 23? What is your opinion, Rapporteur? As I have already said, I am in favor of this amendment. Thank you. We can vote on Amendment 23. All those in favor, please raise your cards. All those against Amendment 23, please raise the cards. Abstentions? Yeah. Amendment 23 is adopted by 41 for, two against, two abstentions. We now need to vote on paragraph 58. Anyone against? Therefore, paragraph 58 is agreed to. Amendment 24. Je passe la parole à Madame Mauborgne de France pour motiver la proposition 24. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Le principe de la compétence d'une juridiction d'un État à l'égard d'un crime est limité au principe de territorialité et de personnalité, ce qui signifie qu'elle ne peut s'exercer que si le crime a été commis sur le territoire de cet État ou si le criminel est l'un de ses ressortissants. On comprend bien qu'un État souhaite poursuivre les personnes ayant commis des crimes sur son sol. Le but de cet amendement est de rappeler que l'application de ce principe lorsque le pays dans lequel le crime a été commis peut garantir la tenue d'un procès équitable. Je vous remercie. Is anyone against amendment 24? Which one? Can Mr. Hadjiani please tell us his opinion? I don't uh, have a strong opinion regarding this amendment, also in line with the principles extradite or prosecute. However, I keep some reservations as to whether in situation of, of conflict or install instability, a fair trial can be ensured. Thank you. We will then put Amendment 24 to the vote. If you are in favor of Amendment 24, please raise voting cards. All those against Amendment 24, please raise cards. Are there abstentions? Amendment 24 is adopted by 34 for, two 
against and 14 abstentions. We now need to vote on paragraph 59 as amended. Is anyone against? Those in favor, please raise cards. It's paragraph 59 as amended. Do I have to repeat that vote? I want to have a clear vote. Huh? Should I repeat it? I. All the, I will repeat that vote yeah. from the start. I'm sorry, but I think there was some insecurity reigning. Um, we now vote on paragraph 59 as amended by amendment 24. Anyone against 59 as amended? Those in favor of 59 as amended, please. Nine. Abstentions? Paragraph 59, as amended, is uh, adopted by 35 for, four against, six abstentions. We will now take paragraphs 60 to 62 together. Does anyone wish a separate vote on paragraphs 60 to 62? It's not the case. So we will take paragraphs 60 to 62 together. Is anyone against? No. So I declare 60 to 62 as adopted. Amendment 25. I call Ms. Posio from Sweden to propose Amendment 25. Thank you, Madam Chair. As I mentioned yesterday, I was surprised that this resolution, which in many ways include important issues related to human rights, says nothing about sexual and reproductive health and rights. I submitted my amend amendment on the importance of SRHR in education as a tool to come to terms with discrimination and violence against women and LGBTI people. Through education, we have every opportunity to make our youths understand the value of a democratic society where everyone has equal value. Sexual and reproductive health and rights should have an obvious place in this resolution, especially now when we see how countries are turning their backs on SRHR, when we see how women and girls are being denied the right the, uh, uh, to safe abortions, when we see how women and girls in conflict are subjected to gender-based violence. We have to use all possible tools to ensure that all people have their rights met and that my fellow parliamentarians includes women and girls. Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak against Amendment 25? Uh, United States, please. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Um, I deeply regret the abortion aspects to this amendment. I do believe, and I believe it strongly, that unborn children deserve respect. Ultrasound imaging today is not just an incredible diagnostic tool, 
but it also provides first pictures of an unborn child. Those months before birth, uh, that child moves, sleeps, has a wake cycle, and the only thing that birth really ought to be seen as is an event that happens to a child who is already living. Conversely, abortion methods dismember and chemically poison unborn children to death. There is nothing benign or generous or kind about a process that does not heal, <clears throat> pardon me, but that destroys an unborn child. It is violence against children, and I would hope that this amendment would be defeated. What is our rapporteur's statement on this? I am uh, very, I am uh, in favor of this amendment. I shall now put amendment 25 to the vote. All those in favor of amendment 25, please raise your voting cards. All those against, please raise your voting cards. Are there any abstentions? Amendment 25 is adopted by 34 yes, 10 no, and 6 abstentions. We will now take paragraphs 63 to 70 together. Does anyone want a separate vote on paragraphs 63 to 70? We will then take paragraphs 63 to 70 together. Is anyone against? So I declare paragraphs 63 to 70 as adopted. Amendment 26, I call on Mr. Mirkishili from Azerbaijan to propose amendment 26. Thank you, Madam Chair. Dear colleagues, uh, as we have mentioned during the discussion on the Amendment 15, protection of human rights and humanitarian challenges of the persons affected by the conflicts must be addressed in a comprehensive manner. In the first two lines of the paragraph 71, as its original drafted, we call OECC participating states and legitimate local authorities to prioritize protection of children affected by armed conflicts. But in the next line of the same paragraph, where we explain who we mean by children affected by conflicts, we we'll only refer to children in conflict zones. We must not forget that internally displaced and refugee children as a vulnerable group are most affected by the conflicts. That therefore, we propose to change the word children in conflict zones to children affected by conflicts in order to reflect both children living in conflict areas and those displaced from these territories in a comprehensive way. Thank you very much. Thank you. Madam Does Chair. anyone wish to speak against Amendment 26? Madam Chair. Armenia, please. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. I propose we continue in the spirit of inclusivity like we started yeah. this session and include both formulations. Actually, the first formulation, affected by armed conflicts, as wished by our Azerbaijani colleagues, is already in this paragraph. But when it comes to talking about effect by explosive remnants of war, there is nowhere else but in the conflict zones that this can potentially happen to children. That's why it's important to keep this formulation and vote down against this amendment to make sure that we stay in the same inclusive and constructive spirit that we have started this uh, session in. Thank you. Thank you. 
Mr. Rapporteur, so, please. So I agree with both of them to use the same terminology as before. And it is and living conditions for children in conflict zones and affected by conflicts and occupation of territories and to promote, and et cetera, et cetera. Thank you. So it is the... I have again Armenia, please, you have the floor. I am proposing to leave the paragraph as is because it already includes a reference to affected by armed conflicts and a reference to in conflict zones because children can touch explosives only in conflict zones. No. And this is about all conflicts, not just Nagorno-Karabakh. The rapporteur has proposed an oral amendment to this. Is anybody opposing this oral amendment as stated by uh, rapporteur? Armenia, please. We <laughs> I oppose this oral amendment because I believe the paragraph already has both inclusive language included in it as Mr. Hajiani has originally proposed. We should keep this paragraph as is. It means that. The so, uh, the oral amendment was opposed, so I proceed to put amendment 26 to the vote. Those in favor of amendment 26, please rate the, raise their voting card. Those against Amendment 26? Sorry. Abstentions? Amendment 26 is defeated by 18 against, 17 for, 13 abstentions. We now need to vote on paragraph 71 as, no, 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 this is defeated. Paragraph, no. We will now take paragraphs 72 to 75 together. Does anyone want a separate vote on any of these paragraphs? This is not the case, so we will take paragraphs 72 to 75 together. Is anyone against? No. So I declare paragraphs 72 to 75 as adopted. Amendment 27, I call Mr. Shapaska from North Macedonia to propose amendment 27. Excuse me, Ms. Shapaska. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll present this amendment on behalf of uh, Ms. Lee. This amendment argues that refugees and internally displaced persons not only have a right of safe return, but of voluntary and dignified return as well. The voluntariness of returns is at the heart of binding international law of refugees. The United Nations Secretary General's representative of internally displaced persons presented by guiding principles of internal displacement in 1998. They are not binding of governments, but they are one of the best foundation for how governments should, should respond to internally displaced persons. Some countries have incorporated them into their laws. Thank you. 
Does anyone wish to speak against Amendment 27? Then the rapporteur, please. I am in favor of this amendment. I then put Amendment 27 to vote. All those in favor of Amendment 27, please raise your cards. All those against Amendment 27, please raise your cards. Abstentions? <laughs> Amendment 27 is adopted by 49 yes, three no, and zero abstentions. We now need to vote on paragraph 76 as amended. Is anyone against? No. Paragraph 76 as amended is agreed to. We will now take paragraphs 77 to 81 together. Does anyone want a separate vote on 77 to 81? No? So let's take paragraphs 77 to 81 together. Is anyone against? No, I declare paragraphs 77 to 81 as adopted. Amendment 28, si esprime il signore Augustori della delegazione italiana. Gra Grazie Presidente. Riconosciamo che salute ed educazione sono diritti fondamentali, ma non possiamo mettere in crisi sistemi complessi come quello dell'istruzione quando siamo di fronte a una massa enorme di false dichiarazioni. È stato dimostrato infatti che delle centinaia di migliaia di persone entrate in Europa attraverso il mio Paese, l'Italia, più dell'80% di esse non aveva in realtà alcun requisito per ottenere, ottenere l'asilo richiesto. Stiamo parlando quindi di semplici migranti economici, immigrati clandestinamente, che però drenano risorse e attenzione ai veri profughi e rifugiati. Proponiamo con questo emendamento di mantenere assistenza sanitaria a chiunque, ma di non destabilizzare il sistema educativo con numeri il cui impatto sarebbe ingestibile. Grazie. Does anyone wish to speak against Amendment 28? Rapporteur, please. Sorry, but the rights uh, to health and education are fundamental and should be upheld for everybody without distinctions, be they refugees or asylum seekers as it is means, meant in the original paragraph. I am against this amendment. How is possible to let people without health system, if somebody is going to be ill, he's outside. And I mean, it is not in favor of the local population. Italy again, please. Point of order. Hmm? I'll have Italy first, please. Thank and you. Belgium. Eh, credo che c'è stata un'incomprensione un con il relatore. Eh, noi che proponiamo di mantenere a tutti l'assistenza sanitaria. Stavamo parlando solo del settore educativo per i richiedenti asilo che provvisoriamente risiedono nel nostro Paese in attesa di avere eh, accolta o respinta la domanda e in molti casi è respinta. Belgium, please. Oui, 
je comprends très bien euh, le point de M. Hadjiani, mais si peut-être euh, l'Italie accepterait de dire euh, euh, donc dans son texte qu'il s'agit de réfugiés et de demandeurs d'asile, on pourrait euh, adopter cet amendement. Là, ce sera encore plus clair, mais il faut alors, donc je propose un amendement oral, d'ajouter euh, le mot euh, après donc euh, réfugié et demandeur d'asile et après demandeur d'asile et réfugié. Donc si euh, on mentionne deux fois les deux groupes, il n'y aura pas de problème et euh, je crois qu'on euh, peut euh, oui, euh, être d'accord. C'est une su suggestion. Merci. Vous avez entendu la proposition orale par la Belgique. Euh, Est-ce que quelqu'un s'oppose à cette euh, proposition orale Le Luxembourg euh, Non, pardon, la Hollande, les, les Pays-Bas. Euh, point of order Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Still the Netherlands, Luxembourg still, my neighbor. I'm very happy to have that neighbor. Um, for me, the point of order is that uh, when, while I, I'm reading the text of my Italian colleague and the amendment, uh, it does not reflect what he uh, explained later on. So there seems to be a difference of light. And I also cannot really uh, follow the Belgian line as what the Belgian line apparently seems to say is already in the existing uh, text. Thank you. Um, I will, the oral amendments are opposed. I will therefore put amendment 28 to the vote. All those in favor of amendment 28, please raise your hands, your, your cards please. With the hands, hi. All those against, raise cards and hands. Hi, please, so we can see it. Abstentions. Amendment 28 is defeated by 22 against, 7 for, and 4 abstentions. I shall take, therefore, paragraph 82 as defeated, and we do not need to vote on, uh, on it. Was, uh, was? The original, the original version of 82. No? Oh. We need to vote. Okay. Amendment 28 is. Def I start again. Thanks for your patience. Amend amend uh, amendment 28 is defeated. As the amendment was defeated, we now need to vote on paragraph 82. Is anyone against 82? I take it paragraph 82 is adopted. We will now take paragraphs 83 to 87 together. Does anyone wish a separate vote on 83 to 87? No. So let's take paragraphs 83 to 87 together. Is anyone against? No. Paragraphs 83 to 87 are adopted. Amendment 29. I call Mr. Aydin from Turkey to propose Amendment 29. Dear Chair and colleagues, as you all know, Turkey has displayed a sensitive stance in the case of the late journalist Jamal Kashikçu 
who was hilariously murdered last year in Istanbul. Working in cooperation with the United Nations, we haven't allowed, to, we have, we haven't allowed the Jamal Khashoggi murder to be cover, covered up. The report released last week classifies, clarifies many facts of the murder. We expect the United Nations to stand behind Special Rapporteur Kalamard's support and take necessary steps. It is the international community's primary duty to fully bring to light the Jamal Khashoggi murder and hold to account all those responsible from the highest level to the lowest one. Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak against Amendment 29? Mr. Rapporteur, please. I am fully in favor of this amendment, which I, uh, I and I want to add also, uh, we appreciate the efforts of Turkey uh, government because it was very uh, decided, this is for, for big importance to have the result. I can then put Amendment 29 to the vote. Will all those in favor of Amendment 29 please raise their voting cards? All those against Amendment 29, please raise your cards. Abstentions? Amendment 29 is adopted by 47-4 zero against and two abstentions. We now need to vote on paragraph 88 as amended. Is anyone against? No, I take paragraph 88 as amended is agreed to. We will now take paragraphs 89 to 91 together. Does anyone want a separate vote on any of those paragraphs? No. Is anyone against paragraphs 89 to 91? I therefore take it paragraphs 89 to 91 are adopted. Last amendment on our list, amendment 30. I call Mrs. Fry, Ms. Fry from Canada to propose amendment 30. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I commend the, the, the rapporteur uh, for actually pointing out this issue about journalism. I think it's a really important paragraph. But I think we need to understand that female journalists are, have been targeted online, not simply with threats to kill them or jail them, but actually with threats of rape and also by taking their reputations as women uh, and vilifying them online in that issue. And I think it's really important to recognize the difference. We do not want to see women not go into the field of journalism because of this fear of their reputations being lost or the fear of rape. And I think that it's important that we follow through with what is going on uh, in, um, in, in the, uh, of the OSC, Office of the OSC Representative on Freedom of the Media, who is trying to encourage women and has online programs that encourages the office, office to consider that women journalists should be made safe, should feel safe, because we need the diversity of voices in journalism. Does anyone wish to speak against Amendment 30? No? What is Mr. Hajjani's opinion? This is a perfect supplementation, uh, Ms. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I shall then put Amendment 30 to the vote. All those in favor of Amendment 30, please raise your voting cards. All those 
those against Amendment 30, please raise voting cards. Abstentions? Amendment 30 is adopted by 49 yes, zero no, zero abstention. We will now take paragraphs 92 to 96 together. Does anyone wish a separate vote on 92 to 96? This is not the case. Is anyone against 92 to 96? I then take it paragraphs 92 to 96 are agreed to. Dear colleagues, that concludes the consideration of amendments. I really like to thank you for your high discipline on speaking time. Thank you very much. You have spared me from really cutting you off, and this is a very good situation. I propose that we now formally move to a vote on the draft resolution as amended. Would those in favor of adopting the draft resolution as amended please raise their voting cards? Would those against draft resolution as amended please raise their voting cards? Abstentions? The draft resolution as amended is adopted by 54, six against and three abstentions. Thank you all for the work, especially thank the rapporteur for the drafting of this resolution. We now move to the following item on the agenda. We now are to consider the supplementary items which were referred to us by the standing committee. The time limit for speeches in each debate is three minutes. If there are lots of members wishing to speak, I may reduce the time limit to try to accommodate as many members as possible. As possible. On the amendments, I will ask speakers to observe a time limit of one minute. We begin with the supplementary item, educating school children to avoid human tra trafficking. There are four amendments to this item. I give the floor to Mr. Smith from United States, the sponsor of this draft resolution. Mr. Smith, you have the floor. Madam Chair, thank you so very, very much. My colleagues, 20 years ago in 1999, at the OSCE Parliamentary Assembly in St. Petersburg, Russia, I sponsored the first human trafficking supplementary resolution designed to encourage all participating states to develop policies to prevent trafficking in all of its ugly manifestations, to rescue and protect victims, and to prosecute, convict, and jail the traffickers. A year later, the US Congress approved and the president signed legislation that I authored called the Trafficking Victims Protection Act, a comprehensive whole of government policy to combat these barbaric crimes in the United States and around the world. Many parliamentarians in this room 
working with your colleagues back home, sponsored historic legislation in your own countries to combat this insidious evil. And indeed, you have accomplished much working with colleagues again back home and across boundaries to try to end modern day slavery. Combating trafficking is and always will be a team effort requiring genuine cooperation and respect and tenacity for each other as we try to protect the innocent and the most vulnerable. But there are some gaps, some huge gaps, especially in the area of prevention and children. I am respectfully asking you today to consider creating another life-saving policy initiative, if you haven't done so already, to comprehensively educate school children to avoid trafficking. This past January, the president signed another law that I wrote called the Frederick Douglass Trafficking Victims Prevention and Protection Act. The new law honors the extraordinary legacy of one of the greatest Americans who ever lived. Born a slave in 1818, Frederick Douglass escaped slavery when he was 20 and dedicated his entire life to abolishing slavery and after emancipation to ending Jim Crow laws, all while struggling for full equality. He was a gifted orator, author, editor, statesman, and a Republican, and he died in 1895. We celebrated his 200th anniversary of his birth last year. Working with Frederick Douglass's great, great, great grandson, who was here today for our side event and did a magnificent job explaining the initiatives that he and his organization have crafted for school children, we designed a comprehensive new initiative for our entire country. Bottom line, age appropriate information to students and educate the teachers so they know what to do. I just want to remind my colleagues that the need is compelling. One in four, one in four trafficking victims in the world, according to the ILO, are children. Bill Wolf, who from Just Ask, who also was at our side event, pointed out that one of five children will be solicited, will be asked by a trafficker, whether it be an online or in some other way, to participate in that nefarious and ugly trade. According to this National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, on average, children at the age of 15 are enticed and they're often trafficked. I ask you to look at the resolution carefully. It has a number of important provisions in it, particularly in the request area. And I do hope that you will vote for the resolution, but more importantly, take this back. We have ready to use, very applicable, teaching guides for you if you need them from these NGOs and by the U.S. government that is now, as a result of the Frederick Douglass Act, creating an aggressive plan to protect children uh, through education. It's an unmet need. We've done prevention, but we haven't done it well enough in the United States or perhaps anywhere else. I thank the chair. Thank you. We will then proceed to the list of speakers. By now I have three speakers. It means we could uh, push this through today. Uh, I will um, pass the floor now to Mr. Frederick Azzopardi from Malta and I will then close the speakers list after the speaker of Malta, please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Human trafficking is a, is a real issue with devastating effects on victims and families. It tears the social fabric of our communities and our states, all of which are vulnerable to this grave injustice. Sadly, ch children are at high risk of trafficking. Technical, technological and social media advances has, have given traffickers the ability to target, lure, and exploit a great number of unsuspecting children into circles of criminality and abuse 
through enabling human traffickers to contact them in large numbers. Although families are vulnerable to being torn apart by human trafficking, many parents have a limited understanding of this phenomenon, including how it begins and how to protect their families. Schools, therefore, are the ideal place where children can learn to take measures to protect themselves. Um, to protect themselves from human traffic trafficking. Schools have the opportunity to work against injustice and provide children with practical tools. Trained school sta staff can be prim primary actors in detecting the signs of victimization. These facts may make this supplementary item on point, and I thank Mr. Smith for bringing this important to topic to the fore. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. The speaker's list is herewith closed, and I pass the floor to Ms. Kara Petin from Armenia, while Ms. Moore from Canada is getting ready. I'll be very brief we, with the hopes that we can uh, pass this resolution today and have a brilliant end to the day. I want to acknowledge the author for uh, this supplementary item. And uh, in my national parliament, I am in the Human Rights Committee, and it was a great pleasure for me to read this text. Also, in uh, parallel with our national parliament adopting a law, most recently a legislative amendment, improving the mechanisms of uh, guiding child victims of human trafficking towards reporting the crimes that have happened to them. Uh, and Armenia has landed a signature to this uh, resolution and we're very much looking forward to voting in favor. Thank you. Thank you. I pass the floor to Ms. Moore from Canada. Merci. Merci beaucoup, euh, Madame la Présidente. Euh, je voulais faire part d'une initiative que nous avons faite au Canada. Donc, nous avons décidé de fonder une association multipartite euh, pour la lutte contre le trafic d'êtres humains et les formes d'esclavage moderne. Donc, chacun euh, des coprésidents font partie. Euh, il y a un coprésident de chacun des partis euh, reconnus officiellement euh, au Canada, ainsi qu'un membre du Sénat. Et euh, la raison pour laquelle nous avions fait ça, c'est que euh, pour nous, le trafic humain et les formes d'esclavage euh, modernes sont totalement inacceptables et nous devons de travailler de manière non partisane sur ces enjeux. De tous les coprésidents, euh, nous avons un point en commun malgré nos différences politiques, c'est que nous sommes tous... Euh, parents de jeunes filles et euh, pour nous c'était évident qu'il fallait euh, travailler sur cet enjeu car euh, trop de jeunes filles sont prises dans des formes d'esclavage euh, modernes et dans des trafics d'êtres humains. Donc j'encourage tous les euh, parlements euh, d'adopter des mesures non partisanes pour travailler sur cet enjeu crucial et en particulier euh, d'adopter des mesures et des programmes qui vont s'adresser euh, aux enfants victimes de traite d'êtres humains euh, car euh, c'est vraiment euh, le futur et avec euh, euh, l'avènement d'Internet et des nouvelles technologies, on a malheureusement euh, témoin d'une euh, évolution trop rapide du nombre d'enfants qui sont pris euh, dans le trafic d'êtres humains. Donc, j'encourage les euh, parlements d'avoir des initiatives non partisanes pour travailler sur cet enjeu et je veux remercier euh, M. Smith pour euh, son travail sur la question. Euh, qui est euh, une question cruciale, selon moi. Je vous remercie. Um, dear colleagues, this is the end of the speaker's list. As the author of this supplementary item, our colleague Smith will have to leave for family reason to back home. I suggest that we give him now the floor for statements and his opinion on the amendments. Please, Mr. Smith. Thank you, Madam Chair, for your gracious accommodating uh, my schedule. Uh, my wife is sick, so I do have to get back. Uh, let me just thank um, uh, Christine Moore for her amendments. Uh, each of them are strengthening amendments, uh, provide some additional clarification. And her, her final amendment, the fourth one, uh, talking about credible job, credible job offers. Uh, we know that the traffickers are very adept 
uh, very skilled at lying uh, online and in other ways, other means, uh, to get people to think they're signing up for a trip or for a job abroad often, an au pair, uh, a modeling career, or whatever it might be, only to find when they get to the destination, uh, they are then trafficked. So again, all four amendments I think are excellent, and I want to thank her for her leadership uh, in Canada. And I want to thank all of you for your support, because many of you did co-sponsor this resolution. Thank you. Colleagues, it's six o'clock. I suggest that we will continue the con consideration of the amendments to the supplementary items at our next meeting tomorrow morning at 11.30. I wish you all uh, excellent La Belgique. Un point d'ordre, la Belgique, oui, s'il vous plaît. Oui, euh, je vois l'heure. Euh, on a toujours deux minutes. Est-ce qu'on ne peut pas voter pour, euh, pour que M. Smith peut aussi s'en aller, à, sachant que sa résolution est euh, votée, peut-être On a encore deux minutes. Écoutez, d'accord avec vous, mais j'ai vu que des collègues ont quand même déjà quitté, quitté la salle. Euh, bon, c'est un point d'ordre. <rire> Est-ce que ce point d'ordre est contesté La Belgique propose de voter sur les amendements à ce point additionnel comme défendu par M. Smith. Est-ce que ce point d'ordre est contesté Non Alors, je vous incite à rester dans la salle. We will then uh, start voting on these amendments. Um, amendment one, uh, Ms. Moore, you have already, uh, would you wish to propose amendment one? You have already spoken quite comprehensively. Ms. Moore, please, on Amendment 1. Uh, if you accept, Madam Chair, I could uh, make a speech on all the amendments quickly. Je vous remercie. Does anyone... Hmm? Uh, maintenant. Vous n'avez pas terminé Allez-y, allez-y. Je croyais que oui. <rire> c'était chose faite. D'accord, donc euh, je vais résumer sur rapidement... Sur tous les quatre les... amendements, s'il vous plaît. Oui, donc je résume rapidement les quatre amendements. Donc, le premier au paragraphe 16, euh, je, on veut aller chercher des données aussi sur euh, l'appartenance à des régions respectives, parce que quelquefois les euh, trafiquants ciblent des régions rurales en particulier, et euh, quelquefois aussi il y a des minorités particulières qui sont euh, ciblées. Donc c'est pourquoi euh, cet amendement est sur la table. Euh, au paragraphe 19, j'intègre aussi la notion de communauté culturelle comme des intervenants potentiels, parce qu'on sait que les trafiquants vont quelquefois cibler des minorités précises, donc aller chercher les leaders de ces communautés culturelles aux au fins d'intervention éducative peut être particulièrement crucial. Euh, au niveau du paragraphe 20, que, euh, au, euh, du paragraphe que je veux ajouter après le paragraphe 20, euh, euh, ça encourage justement les, euh, euh, les adolescents à recevoir de l'éducation au niveau des emplois, des offres d'emploi crédibles, parce que euh, souvent, euh, par exemple, on va offrir des emplois qui sont faux. Euh, par exemple, on va offrir un, un emploi comme hôtesse, donc la jeune fille croit que son rôle va être simplement d'accueillir euh, les clients, et de leur dire bonjour, alors que dans le fait, les faits, l'offre d'emploi vise beaucoup euh, l'esclavage sexuel. Euh, donc, c'est un, un élément, un amendement particulièrement important. Et euh, finalement, le dernier amendement euh, vise à se doter de programmes euh, adaptés culturellement euh, dans les contextes locaux ou euh, avec les populations autochtones. Si on prend le contexte canadien, 30 à 50 des victimes euh, d'esclavage moderne sont des euh, gens d'origine autochtones, donc d'avoir des programmes adaptés localement, par exemple pour les Canadiens, aux personnes autochtones peut être particulièrement crucial au niveau de l'éducation. Et bien sûr, on s'adapte au contexte local au niveau euh, de, des autres communautés culturelles. Donc, globalement, c'est les quatre amendements qui sont présentés au point additionnel. Je vous remercie. Uh, Mrs. Moore has uh, proposed all the four amendments. Uh, 
Is anyone wishing to speak against any of the four amendments? I open this also now to all the four amendments. No? Let's vote. I agree. So, uh, can I vote on all the four amendments together? Thank you. <laughs> Will all those in favor of the four amendments please raise your voting cards? All those against the four amendments, please raise voting cards. No. Abstentions. All amendments are adopted by 49, 4, 0 against and 0 abstentions. We can now do the final vote on this supplementary item as amended by the four amendments. Uh, those in favor of adopting this supplementary item as amended. Those against the supplementary item as amended? Any abstentions? This supplementary item as amended was adopted by 49 for, zero against, and zero abstentions. I thank you all for being so efficient, and I'm glad that we can soon toast with each other at this marvelous reception of our beautiful hosts of beautiful Luxembourg. Je, je vous remercie toutes et tous, et je vous souhaite une excellente soirée. La séance est ajournée à demain, 11h30.